So um, hi everyone, welcome. Um, this is your if this is your first introductory webinar to Crest. Welcome. If if it's your um, second or third, then welcome back. Um, we'll kind of go through the plan for today. Um, but if I start with some introductions, my name is Maham and I'm a project manager from SCW working on the Crest team. If I introduce my um, colleagues as well, so Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Blaney. I'm an associate BI consultant. Um, so I generally support with the the modelling side of things. I've been involved in some of the development of the tool as well. That's great. And Nessa. Hi everyone. My name's Nessa Passara. I am a BI consultant working alongside Liam and Maham. Um, and yeah, similar to Liam, I'm largely focused on the development of the tool. That's great. Thank you. Um, so the structure for today is um, we'll be going through um, introductions as we've already done. We'll go through um, the responses to the survey that was sent to the invitees that came today. Um, we will then go through some of the general principles of so the math that sits behind the demand and capacity modeling tool that is Crest. And, uh, and then that will be followed up with a demo. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions at the end. Um, if you have questions throughout the day, then please just pop them in the chat and we'll, we'll keep an eye on those as well. Thank you. Um, Liam, can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so these are the um, questions that you were asked um, at registration. So, I think. Looking at these, the majority of people attending today um, actually have not used Crest before and are and are new to demand and capacity modeling as well. So um, yeah, welcome. Um, hope we can be helpful to you today. Um, if you move on to the next one, please. Um, the next one. Um, yes, yeah, so this is just a, a shout out to that link. These slides will be circulated, um, but that's a really good, useful link that links back up to NHS England and lots of demand and capacity tools that they have listed on, on their website as well. And the next one, please. Um, so I'm just going to hand over to my colleague Nessa to, um, to take you through this slide. So um, a brief overview of what, what is Crest, which is a very um, a vague question, but um, so Crest is a modelling tool which has been created for children and young people's mental health systems. So it's based on um, a piece of maths called Erlang queuing theory. So it kind of works on a probability model. Um, and I like to describe it like a really fancy calculator. So you put in your figures and you get out some um, impactful modelling and insight into your service. Um, so it's an evidence based approach to strategic and operational planning, so you can use it to assist those questions that might arise during planning. And um, we always aim to keep Crest user friendly and accessible, so we don't want it to be too complicated um, or too difficult for anyone to be able to input their figures. So it can be used to answer lots and lots of different questions. So some examples are shown on the screen such as how can I manage reduced capacity in my community team because of absence sickness? How do you manage influxes of demand? And uh, what is the optimum number of inpatient beds required for demand? So you're really looking at how much do you need to meet that predicted demand is the, you know, the core question in different forms. The next slide. So Crest has actually been going um, for quite a long life cycle, so it's been developed developed for a number of years. Um, the most recent version, which we're going to be looking at today, was launched in March 2020. Um, so that is the online tool that Liam's going to take you through a demo in shortly. Um, and then we're currently on further development, so it's always evolving. We're always trying to make things easier or more insightful for the users. So we're, um, we'll touch on that just at the end about the future developments so that you can see what's coming. And the next slide. So pretty much um, similar to how I mentioned just before. So why do you need demanded capacity modelling? So it really allows you to have those conversations between providers and commissioners and get on the same page sometimes with some numbers and be able to see um, what things should you be focusing on. There's the evidence of the demand that you're requiring for that sort of 
um, the, the capacity that you acquire for the demand that's being predicted. Um, so it gives you a lot of um, insight into why waiting lists grow, um, the required level of capacity, maximum waiting list sizes, um, and the gap between required capacity. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of insight to be gained from it. Now I think I'm going to move on to Liam, who's going to take you through a little bit of a demo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nessa. Um, so just before the demo, just a very quick overview of Erlang. Um, Nessa's already touched on this, but it's so Crest is based on Q in theory, and part of that Q in theory is a measure called the Erlang, uh, which it initially came around um, when they were looking at uh, kind of phone lines managing that. So when you would have your switchboards where they'd have to manually plug them in and stuff like that. So it was a way of determining how many calls were incoming and uh, how many kind of operators they would need um, to have available to meet that. And obviously over the years that's developed a lot and it's now in place kind of everywhere. You wouldn't even think about it, kind of supermarkets, petrol forecourts and so on. Um, so it's just a family of equations that it says on here. And what we've done with Crest is taken that and we kind of translated it from your phone calls. So from calls per hour, handle time and so on. We've translated that into appointments, into beds if you're in an inpatient setting, um, into wait times and so on. So just a quick intro to demand and capacity modeling. This is just a um a quick example. So this is a, a completely made up service. But say in 2020 we started a new service in our community uh, looking at young people with mental health issues. Um they're all advised that they'd be referred um expecting a face-to-face -face assessment within four weeks but in this particular instance those referrals were waiting longer than that uh, the service was available 52 weeks a year and we were expecting to work with a thousand assessments in the first year but we actually received 1040 so we thought that's fine we've allocated 20 appointments a week so 20 times 52 that would give us a thousand and forty so surely we should have enough capacity there to meet that demand but in reality those patients were waiting longer than four weeks so the question is why why was that not the right amount of appointments so if we look at those referrals in a bit more detail so over the course of the year we know that those referrals don't come forward in a, a strict pattern we know there's going to be months where there's going to be more referrals somewhere there'll be less we've got peaks and troughs all the way through the year 5% of those appointments didn't attend. But again, surely that's fine because we had enough appointments to meet those 1,040 referrals, so it should even out, you would think. So again, looking at this, the kind of flow of referrals, we can see that there was unmet demand that stayed in the system. Uh, some of the unused capacity was lost uh, because of the variable flow of those referrals and that did not attend appointments it just it turned out that that wasn't enough uh, to meet that that four week target so it's just to summarize that so with the um the appointments that weren't meeting it essentially we had 307 referrals that took longer than four weeks to be seen so the question that raises is how do we know how many appointments we would need then so that we can eliminate that those breaches essentially and the answer is demand and capacity modeling. There's many different approaches to it. So Crest is just one example of doing it. Um, but where it becomes complicated is when you have to factor in these questions here. So do we have enough capacity to meet the demand? What happens when the demand increases? And what happens if we lose some capacity? And then sort of looking at hospital settings, so in acute hospitals, it's uh, demand and capacity modeling is obviously uh, often based on very granular data, looking at the historic bed occupancy by each day of the year, admission type, specialty and length of stay. Uh, we're all, all of that's modeled with demographic change and other influences on the demand taken into account. Um, so Crest uses a very high level perspective on those services. So we won't go into quite that level of granularity. 
Uh, and this here is just a few examples of other modeling tools that, are, that have been developed by NHS England. Um, so these slides will be shared after the, the session, so you'll be able to go and view these in your own time. So if we move on to a live demo of Crest, so if I just bring that up. So for those who haven't seen the website before, I'll just give a quick tour if you like. Uh, so this is the home page, we've just got a bit of background info on here. There's a short video by Catherine Pugh just explaining kind of where Crest came from and what its purpose is. Um, under the About Crest heading, we've got a bit more background information. There's some theory behind it, so if you want to read up more on Q in theory and the Erlang maths that we mentioned earlier, you can find that there. Uh, what can I use Crest for? So on there we've got some modeling examples and some case studies of uh, kind of real life use of the tool. Um, there are some COVID specific resources that we developed a couple of years ago and a bit more background information about who kind of came up with the ideas behind Crest. Um, help and guidance gives you a full range of user guides and FAQs. There's also a resources section which is where we'll upload the recording of this uh, this session. We've got a glossary of terms because as we all know working in the NHS it's full of acronyms so that just explains some of those. And then again you've got those same examples there. Um, if I jump into the tool, so under the model heading is where you'll find the tool itself. Um, you do need to log in to access this. Um, if you've got an nhs.net address then it will let you log in directly with that it will take you through the nhs mail uh, website uh, if you don't that's fine you can create an account on the website and then you can sign in that way um, so we do actually have two modeling tools available but we're just going to focus on the demanding capacity tool today so if i click on this um so it'll come up with a page showing everything you've modeled previously i've only got one kind of demo set up there uh, a bit more information on Erlang on the right hand side. So to get started we create a new scenario and it will just come up with this checklist. Uh, so this is all of the information that you need to get started modeling with Crest. So you need to know how many referrals you have on per year on average, um, how many appointments or beds that you have available currently, and you also need to know the average number of contacts or the length of stay for each accepted referral. So once you've got that, you click on I'm ready. And this is the, the kind of Crest tool itself. Um, so the first thing you'll need to do is select whether you're modeling a community or inpatient setting. Uh, so I'm going to do a community one for this example. Uh, you can give it a name. I'm just going to give it test. You can give it a description as well if you like and then create. So this is the tool. It it can look a little bit intimidating sometimes because there's a lot of fields, but in reality we only need to focus on the left hand side to begin with. And even on here there's only really the referrals, the points of contact and then the targets are all we need to fill in. So in the example we're going to use, so we're going to say that we've got 968 referrals expected. Each one has on average 10.6 contacts. Uh, we want to see them within 18 weeks, so 126 days, and we want to see 90% of those referrals within that time frame. Uh, the service is going to run from for 52 weeks of the year, but you can adjust that if you're running a maybe a school setting, for example, where it's not available the whole year. You can adjust that in there. Um, available appointments, so we're currently able to offer 180. And what these do, as well as being an appointments figure, it also acts as the x-axis on the chart, which you'll see in a minute. So I'm just going to put 220 in there, so we'll be modeling from 120 through to 220, 180, sorry. So once you put your information in, run that model, and that will come out with a graph like this. Um, so there's three colored lines on there and this purple horizontal line. So the horizontal line represents your uh, your waiting limit. 
so we want to see all of our patients below this line essentially anything above that would indicate a breach um, the red line is your percentage of breaches so along the x-axis we've got our appointment values so we're saying at each of these values we'd be expecting this number um, of breaches each month the green line is the average time that people would be waiting to be seen. Um, so you can hover over to see those numbers. So in this instance, you'd be waiting 38 days to, to get a um, to be seen, and that's at 199 appointments. And the blue line represents your utilization. So of the available appointments that you've got, how much of that is actually being used? So it's a bit of a balancing act between using enough of that so that you're not wasting too many appointments but also you don't want to be pushing yourself right to the limit um, you can turn the lines on and off as well just to make it a little bit clearer if you want to but the um the main thing we want to look at here is the red line so the point where that crosses the purple line which in this case is right about here about 199 appointments that is where we've met this target so as it uh, says up here, so you'll need a minimum of 199 appointments you know, to see 90% within 126 days. So the goal is always to get that red line below the purple line. Um, you've also got a table below that, which just has those same figures, but this can be exported into Excel, for example. And you can download a copy of the chart as well. So what we would do with Crest, we would run this to get our, our kind of baseline scenario and then these figures on the right the test values are where you can kind of manipulate those and play around with them a bit so next year we might be looking at reducing that from an 18 week down to a 12 week target so if we run that again with an 84 day limit it brings up these additional dotted lines on the chart so i just turn these ones off it's a little bit clearer so then that just allows you to compare your current situation with your your kind of predicted forecasted scenario so in that case if we were to reduce our target limit down to 12 weeks like we specified up there we would actually need to make 200 appointments available as that's where that line crosses the um the target so that's essentially that's what we would use crest for is establishing that baseline and then you can go in and manipulate these figures so you could also increase your demand maybe up to 990 referrals next year run that and see how that comes out so as expected you're going to then need yet more appointments so you'd need to go up to 204 if you're going to have that increased demand plus the reduced waiting limit So yeah, that is kind of Crest in a nutshell. Um, if I just go back to these slides. Liam, we uh, have a question in the chat as well. Okay. Um, of if we wanted to to use Crest um, to, to model for their service, what kind of support can they have access to? Um, so um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a load of user guides and FAQs on the website. Uh, we've also got a support team who are available Monday to Friday. Um, and as also myself and my colleagues, you can always reach out to us and we'd be happy to run some one on one sessions if needed. Um, hopefully that that helps. Um, so just to recap, so the, um, the scenario we just ran, so we're looking at 968 referrals per year, 10.6 points of contact, and we were able to deliver 180 appointments. Um, our target was to see 90% within 18 weeks. So the maths behind the tool knows that those referrals don't come in a regular pattern. So that's all taken into account within the, the kind of back end maths in the tool. Uh, it knows that the points of contact is only an average and so on. Um, I think that's a typo, that should be a Poisson distribution. But so for anyone a bit more kind of technically or mathematically minded, uh, it's modeled on a, a Poisson distribution. So as I said earlier, 
once you've established your baseline, you can then use the test values to um, to model your your kind of forecasted changes for following years. And that's where the true power of CRISP is. It allows you to inform your, your discussions and drive changes in those ways by very quickly running a new set of figures and seeing what the impact would be. Uh, and as we saw, reducing that waiting limit down to 12 weeks rather than 18, we could see that we needed an extra appointment to be available every week to meet that demand. Um, so again, just to recap on what we just did. So there's our baseline and there's our adjusted um, waiting limit. We ran those and then the point where the line crossed the, the purple line, that's the kind of sweet spot where we know that we're meeting that target. And then you can use the results of that modeling to agree the optimum number of appointments to commission. Obviously, it's not gospel. You can still go and have your own discussions and make your own decisions. But Crest will give you that, that kind of good indication of what you should be aiming towards. Um, so we saw by reducing that waiting limit down, we need to add an additional appointment available per week. And our final position in that case would mean um, each patient would be waiting on average 21 days to be seen. 98% um, of nearly 99 of those available appointments would be used. And we'd be expecting just under three cases on average to breach each month. So what we could then do is take that further and model for a four week target instead. So reducing that waiting limit down to 28 days. In this case, we would need to make 203 appointments available. Uh, we'd be using 97% of those appointments. Um, we're expecting 6.9% of referrals to be breaching each month. And the patients would be waiting 7.7 .7 days before being seen on average. So as shown, to get started with Crest, you only need three very uh, basic figures. So you need your average number of referrals into the service, the points of contact, um, or the number of beds if you're looking at an inpatient scenario. Um, and you need to know the length of stay um, or the average appointments that are available. Um, Liam, uh, we do have a couple of questions in the chat as well. OK. Um, so the first one was, is it possible to run from a starting point of having a backlog? Um, so, yeah, so that's something that's it's come up a few times in the past. Um, so the the surge tool that we have on the website as well that was created specifically for handling backlogs um so you could plug your numbers into there and that will give you a an adjusted referrals figure which you can then put into crest um so you yes you can model it with having a backlog but you have to do an additional bit of analysis first if that makes sense to kind of incorporate that backlog into your referrals figures um, it's something that we're still exploring as the best way of handling that in the future. Um, Thank you. And um, the second question was, can you build in DNAs and conversion rates? Yeah, so again, that's something you'd have to do a little bit of work beforehand. Um, we do have an FAQ on the website, I believe, around DNAs, uh, which just it goes through the steps you would need to do um, to incorporate those in your referrals figures. Um, but yeah, as Crest is just it's quite high level, um, a lot of that stuff isn't directly covered by the tool. You would have to do a little bit of work outside of it first. Um, but once you've factored that in, then you can put those numbers straight into the tool. Um, That's great. That, Thank that you. Helps. OK, um, I'm going to hand over to Nessa now. Thanks, Liam. So um, that was a great demo of the current version of Crest. Um, so we just wanted to quickly touch because this financial year we're actually having a um, a bit of a redesign and a relaunch of Crest. So we just wanted to mention those. Um, so if you go on to the next slide, please. Um, so um, the new developments of Crest, we're looking at being able to model, uh, improve the ease in which you can model multiple services. So we know the switch to ICBs there's potential that people are going to want to model multiple services at the same time. So 
the way that we're approaching this with the new developments is allowing people to upload a CSV data file, which they can download a template, complete it and upload it. And that will have all those services already modeled and ready to interact with. Um, so the new tool will still be on the web. So it'll be a new web app uh, where you can interact and select individual services um, and then do your scenario testing in a variety of different ways. Um, we are going to allow the creation of customizable management reports. So that will be both a PDF and a presentation so that you can take those outputs away and um, disseminate that amongst stakeholders for conversations. Uh, there will be additional modeling for um, a 12 month forward view so we can consider the impact of seasonality. We know that's quite a significant um, impact on CYP services, you know, around schools. So we can allow that we can look at that and then also start considering any emerging backlogs that could be um, starting over that 12 month period. And there will be options to download those charts and data to take away and put into your own reports. Um, so if you go to the next, so we've got a bit of a shameless plug for a call for volunteers. So we are about to enter the user testing um, stage. So we're really keen to get some people who have experience with Crest, don't have experience with Crest to kind of give the tool a go, feedback, tell us what you like, what you don't like, and we can try and make it as um, usable and user friendly as possible. Um, and we're also keen to hear any feedback via the email, um, which will be circulated as well. And then on to the next one. So how to find out more, and that's about Crest, that's about future developments. It's really about anything. Um, so Crest is actually accessible to anyone working in health and social care. So you can register and access the tool on the website. Um, there's a lot of FAQs, scenarios, um, user guides to access. But if you need further support, then you can get in touch with our support team at the email. And we're happy to support with that and have one to one sessions and uh, ensure that you're able to use Crest to the best of, you know, to gain the most out of it. Um, and I think that's it. Right. Any questions? There we go. Thank you, Nessa. Um, so yes, any any questions? Um, please do raise your hand. And silence. <laughs> oh, there's one. Hi, uh, so I was just wondering how you would uh, go about getting, because uh, initially we want to work backward to, to the number of appointments that we need. How do you, um, is there a good best way to work out your initial estimate to sort of get the most accurate model? Um, so we would always ideally start with your, your real world um kind of appointments um we tend to use like a 12 month average so if you just look at your previous 12 months and see how that works out to you just to give you that initial value um obviously you could then um manipulate that if it didn't seem quite right or if it wasn't enough you can increase it um just to see how those outputs look on the chart um uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's helpful, but yeah. No, no, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for the demonstration. It was really good. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Um, any any other questions? No. Um, so I have circulated the link to the website as well as our um, email address in the chat. Um, so if you think of anything um, afterwards, then yeah, please feel free to get in touch. Um, I shall stop recording now as well. Um, the slides will be circulated and the recording, um, as Liam mentioned, will be.